is mealtime stressful? Does this seem like there's a lot of moving pieces and there's a lot for you to try to figure out and keep track of? And sometimes like the, you want to sit down and be able to enjoy your meal, but there's just so much you have to pay attention to for your person with dementia that it just seems really stressful. In today's video, I'm going to share with you some tips to make mealtime less stressful, including some bonus tips at the end of this video on eating out with somebody who has dementia. As a reminder, Careblazer, a few years ago, I interviewed a nutritionist on important things to consider um, for somebody who has dementia, just in terms of health an approach and making sure swallowing issues have been checked out and investigated, I'm going to include the link to that video below. But in today's video, I want to talk about how to make me meal time and eating easier. So in these seven tips I'm going to share, it's all about simplifying and preparing to make meal time less stressful for you and your loved one with dementia. Number one, clean up. This can seem like an odd tip. Why am I talking about cleanup? But a top complaint I hear a lot from Careblazers is that their loved one is a messy eater and that during mealtime and after mealtime, there's so much to clean up on the floor around them, on the table, even on their clothes. What you could think about is how can you set it up to make cleanup as easy as possible for you? One idea would be to um, get some really cheap plastic cloths that you could put over the entire table so you're not worried about any staining or food drops on a nice cloth that might need to be washed. It can make cleanup super easy too. You can just wrap up the whole plastic cloth and throw it away. You can also consider dignity bibs. These are bibs that are designed to look like clothing or scarves that protect their clothing. Um, and if you don't want to spend money on something like that, you can also just take like an old shirt and create your own dignity bib. What I'm going to do for you actually is every single thing I mentioned in this video, I'm going to link to it in the description below so you can check it out. I'll even link some videos on how you can create your own dignity bibs. That way, if your loved one's a messy eater and food's getting everywhere, you can just take these, you know, um, the dignity bibs, you can um, wash them and not have to worry about the clothing that they're wearing after they've eaten. Number two, take time to consider the dishes and the utensils that you are using. Make sure, look at the table or the area that you have your loved one eating their meal. Make sure there's not a lot of extra things around there. They only probably need one utensil for that meal, right? Make sure there's not extra utensils. Make sure there's not decorations nearby. Maybe reconsider like instead of a bowl of soup with a spoon, perhaps their soup is now served in a mug that makes it easier for them to have the soup. You could also consider weighted utensils like weighted forks and spoons. When something is weighted, it helps reduce the shakiness of somebody's hand. That can help reduce messes significantly. Again, I'm going to link some of those items below this video for you. You also want to consider that dishes and um, cups and things don't have a lot of busy patterns in them. I know they might look beautiful, but it can be confusing to the person with dementia. Typically, uh, choosing a solid, bright color can be helpful um, in the person with dementia being able to see the food and um, uh, help minimize a lot of the messes that come when there's like other designs and patterns on it that it's kind of confusing and they're moving their fork and trying to figure out where is the food and where is the pattern. All right, number three, this is a big one I've seen so many times. Try to reduce distractions during mealtime, especially if you're dealing with a messy eater who is watching TV during the meal, so they're not really paying attention to the food on the plate. It's just gonna be naturally so much easier to make a mess and to drop things and to scooch things off of the plate and to have it go everywhere when they're not focused on the food and they're focused on the TV show that's playing. I've also noticed that when people are eating meals with a TV on, sometimes they get so engrossed in the TV program, they're not eating at their usual pace and that makes it more likely the food is going to go cold and that makes it more likely they're not gonna wanna eat their food because like the food doesn't taste as good cold. So if possible, uh, try to remove any excess distractions from the table area, turn off the TV, turn on the lights if you want to put on some smooth sounding music or just sit with them and eat a meal together. Um, 
that would be great. Number four, I was just giving you a little sneak peek into it. Eat together if you can. Sit with your loved one, enjoy a meal together. What's really great about this is that while you are eating, you are modeling eating for your loved one and that can be helpful for them to start to model the same behavior. It also provides the opportunity for further connection and socialization, which is always great. Tip number five, I really want you to become a detective around the food your loved one enjoys and eats. Does it like notice, does your loved one seem to eat a particular type of food more often? Is it about a certain texture? Is it about uh, the color of the food? Is it about how easy it is to um, eat the food? Some people might prefer finger foods over the spoon and maybe that's okay. Right? I know for my mom, she's definitely going to be so much easier with the finger foods than using any utensils. Even when utensils probably should be used, she's going to use her hands, but at least she's eating. So pay attention to the types of food preferences and the preferences for how your loved one eats that food. How does the food look? If it's not really appetizing, they're probably not really going to want to eat it. Just like if somebody put something that didn't look appetizing in front of you, you're probably not going to want to eat it either. Even things like temperature is important to consider. So communication and reasoning uh, gets more challenging as the disease progresses. So you might be serving something hot to your loved one, but they don't realize they need to wait. So they might try it, it might be too hot and they don't go back to eating it. Like, can you try serving it at a temperature where they're going to be able to eat it right away and they don't have to actually wait for it to cool down? Tip number six, time. It might take longer for your person with dementia to eat a meal, longer than you and I might take. And so making sure that when you serve them, they, there's actually adequate time for them to be able to eat that meal and there's no rush in terms of when they need to be done with it. When you think about eating, there's actually a lot of coordination that goes into it, having to um, you know, see the food, choose the food they want, put it in their mouth, chew the food, swallow the food. It takes time. So in order to set yourself up for as much success as possible, allow a proper amount of time. Ooh, and number seven, Care Blazer, their teeth, dentition. It's so important. A lot of times if somebody with dementia is not eating, um, we've already talked about swallowing as an important thing that needs to be um, investigated. You'll usually tell they have problems with swallowing because they might be choking or coughing a lot when they're eating. But dentition sometimes is a sneakier one that we don't realize. They could be having problems or pain in their mouth. They also might, their teeth might not be in great condition. So the textures and toughness of the foods, some are going to be easier than others for them. So this is where we want to make sure like their teeth are in decent shape or you're at least making sure like you know the condition of their teeth and what types of food they are going to have more success in eating versus others. All right, so those are seven tips to help make eating more successful and less messy in the home environment. Let's talk about eating out with somebody who has dementia. All right, as with many things in dementia, you wanna prepare for success by planning ahead of time. You might wanna consider what are the days of the week or the times in the day where restaurants seem to be a bit slower and not as busy. Remember, you want to allow adequate time for your loved one to be able to eat their food and also minimize the chances that you will have to be waiting for a table, which can lead to increased frustration, confusion, and agitation for the person with dementia. Consider making your own takeout kit that you bring with you to the restaurant. This takeout kit could include um, a dignity bin, like we talked about earlier, some wet night mats, maybe some weighted utensils that make it easier for them to eat. Also, when you order food, you can request that maybe like bigger portions of meat, like a chicken or something, be cut up into smaller pieces if you know your loved one will do better with smaller pieces. And then to make it um, like normalize it, like it's not something special just for your loved one, you can also request your meal is also served in that same way. Care Blazer, mealtimes can be a source of stress and frustration for many, but I hope by considering some of these tips it might actually start to become a more enjoyable experience for the both of you. Let me know, what are your favorite mealtime tips and strategies to make mealtime more enjoyable and less messy? You can leave it in a comment below. All right, I'll be back next week. Bye.